All right. I'd like to thank all our viewers that are tuning back into another CSC listed company issuer update. Uh, as you know, I'm Anil Mall. I represent the Canadian Securities Exchange. But today I am joined virtually uh, by Mr. Steve Hansen. Uh, Steve is not only the founder, but the CEO and president of Acme Lithium. Acme Lithium has been trading on the CSE for just over a year now. They trade under the symbol ACME. And Steve is here to tell us all about the company and their vision. So Steve, there's obviously a few viewers that are not familiar, or there are some viewers that might not be familiar with the company and what you do. So I'd like to welcome you on board. And uh, why don't we begin by you talking to our viewers a little bit about the company and what the vision is. Uh, pleasure to be with you again today, uh, Anil, um, and uh, happy to talk about Acme Lithium. We've had a very busy first year as a company. Uh, we went public with one project in Nevada. Uh, we now have four projects. Uh, we've got two projects in Nevada and now two in Southeast Manitoba, um, and have uh, done a fair bit of work actually on these projects leading up to this point today here in 2022. Um, uh, we have a project in Fish Lake Valley in Nevada, and then in, really in the epicenter of development in Nevada, we have a project, a brine project in Clayton Valley. Uh, which we are actively exploring and in fact about to drill in about three to four weeks time. Um, we've done two phases of geophysics in Clayton Valley. Uh, we have our permits and in fact we're uh, constructing drill pads and a road uh, into that project as we speak right now and uh, this is a major milestone coming up for us. We're drilling um, you know one of the only lithium brine projects uh, in the U.S. so really excited about this near-term milestone coming up uh, in Nevada and then we have a major your exploration program starting in Manitoba uh, sometime in June. So uh, lots of new developments coming up for ACME. And, uh, you know, there was really a, a big uh, tailwind coming in the industry. We've seen lithium prices soar over 400% this past year. Uh, lots of interest in our company. And uh, again, we hope to have major developments coming for ACME over the course of 2022. Steve, I'm curious, and I'm sure our, our viewers that are not as versed on, you know, the different regions, what are the differences between, you know, projects in Nevada and then pro projects in Canada, mainly Manitoba? Well, we started focusing on Nevada in particular because uh, in Clayton Valley, it is one of the only places that has produced lithium in the United States continuously since 1966. Uh, the Abermarley, a New York Stock Exchange company, is a production facility there. Um, we actually are their neighbor to the Northwest. We're contiguous to their project. Um, and again, we're one of the only brine projects in the United States that's active right now. Um, so we're very excited about the history of that region. Um, we've done some work on the project and really that's uh, where we honed in and were able to acquire this project from a private vendor who'd owned it for about eight years. So uh, really exciting a few months ahead when we drill this project. Uh, Nevada is a great state to work on. They've got great infrastructure. You can work 12 months of the year. There's power, road access. Um, our crews can, can uh, in some cases, go home to bed. You're not in the Arctic. You're not in a jungle. Um, some real advantages to working in Nevada. And we have the support of the state, uh, the local community. And now with uh, Biden's Defense Production Act, uh, there's federal support behind critical minerals like projects like ours. Yeah, and, and that definitely helps in, in, you know, obviously meeting milestones and moving your project along. And at the end of the day, building shareholder confidence, which is which is key. Now, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, your, your team and company has been putting out consistent news flow, especially in 20, well, 2021 as well, but moving into 2022 as we get into uh, May now. Um, so talk to us a little bit about that journey. What happened in 2021 and what is the company, uh, you know, obviously you've closed a number of financings, you've acquired a new project. So talk to our viewers about that. Well, we certainly had our running shoes on. I've got a great team that uh, that backs me. Um, you know, we went public with one project in Nevada, and now we have four projects, two in Nevada and two in Manitoba. We've done a number of financings. We've been fortunate in attracting capital from uh, the institutional community. 
um, uh, mining flow through fund came in and invested in us in December, and that money is going to be utilized at our Manitoba projects. Uh, and then uh, Lithium Royalty Corporation and their parent Waratah Capital Advisors came in and fi financed us in March uh, to give us additional capital. So again, this strategic investment has been very important to us as we advanced our projects. And then just in the last 24 hours, I have announced a follow on financing from both of these investors who are going to top up their interest in our company. We expect to close that financing next week. Uh, it'll give us sufficient capital to not only meet all of our drilling requirements for 2022, it'll give us capital into 2023. So we're well financed. Uh, from savvy, smart investors that understand our sector. And again, they're backing us because of my track record for 30 years working on four continents, as well as my team's track record and the quality of the projects that we have. So, you know, we're really excited about 2022. Uh, we've got drilling upcoming in Nevada. And then, um, you know, here in Canada, I'm really excited about what's happening in Southeast Manitoba. Um, this region is going to be uh, a massive area play for lithium um, over the years to come. Uh, the only uh, lithium producing mine in Canada uh, consistently for a few decades has been the Tanko mine. Um, uh, it has not been in production for a number of years. It was bought by Sino Mine, a major Chinese company a few years ago. And just recently, they put that mine back into production, production producing lithium, cesium, and tantalum. And we are their neighbor to their south. And then we have a project to the north of the mine. So where's the best place to find a mine? Well, guess what? Next to an existing mine. So um, we have a large land package in Manitoba. This is hard rock, pegmatite. Um, we have a major exploration program planned starting in June. Uh, we'll have boots on the ground there. Um, soil sampling, till sampling, trenching is going to go on through June and July. And then we'll have a major drill program commencing uh, in the fall in Manitoba. So um, we've got about, uh, if, this, if this financing closes next week, we'll have about $11 million in the bank. Uh, it's more than enough money to meet our, meet our drilling requirements in Nevada and in Manitoba, and hopefully we can deliver for, for shareholders in making a major discovery. Steve, you briefly mentioned a, a little bit about your track record. I want to actually talk a little bit more about that, along with your team as well, that you've assembled to, you know, obviously move this project forward. So why don't you update our viewers on, on your background a little bit, and then talk to us about your team that you've uh, put together. Sure. Well, you know, I, I've been CEO of a number of companies. Um, I've been on boards. I've been an advisor to boards. Um, I've been in the public markets for close to 30 years. I actually had an equity money management firm for a number of years in the 2000s. Um, uh, I love uh, starting companies and working with, uh, with smart people. I've got a great technical team uh, who I work with in the southwestern United States and, uh, and also some advisors that I work with here in Canada that have a long track record of working uh, throughout this region. Again, as I've mentioned, I've worked on four continents from Mongolia to Argentina to Kenya uh, to Mexico, to to other places around the world. I know how to work in challenging jurisdictions, but you know, here we have uh, a, an ACME who's focused on, on the North American market. And really the reason why we're focused on North American projects is there is a crisis that is happening. We do not have enough battery metals, in particular lithium. The auto manufacturers are screaming for supply and ensuring there's a supply chain. And that's why we're seeing um, Prime Minister Trudeau announce an investment of $3 billion in critical minerals about two weeks ago. Why um, President Biden has announced the Defense Production Act to make sure that they can secure a domestic supply of, of critical minerals. So, you know, I think um, there's a real good tailwind behind us here in North America to secure domestic supply. And hopefully Acme can be one of the companies that does that over the years to come. Well said. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, your, your team and company, you've been, you've been meeting milestones consistently over, over not even just in 2021, but the first few months of 2022 as well. Talk to us about that journey and, and maybe what are some of the upcoming milestones viewers and investors have to look forward to? You know, I credit credit my team and some of the advisors that I have and consultants as well that we've worked with this past year. You know, I've developed some relationships over 30 years and I'm able to tap into that expertise. So I really credit the team that I have. It's a small team, but um, they, they have experience in advancing and, and really de-risking projects like ours. 
um, and doing it in a cost efficient manner. So, you know, the capital that we have, we, we watch our pennies and make sure we spend it efficiently and prudently. Um, but we are aggressive. We, we move um, and, and very quickly. And our goal here is really to deliver on milestones and, and overperform. Um, 2022 is really going to be an interesting year for us. Um, we're drilling our lithium brine project in Nevada here in a few weeks time. Um, and we'll continue to advance that project through 2022. Um, our goal is to continue exploring Manitoba and then ultimately drill there uh, in the fall of 2022. And then we have a project called Fish Lake Valley, which is the valley over from Clayton Valley in Nevada. We've got some geophysics starting there, and then I'll make a decision in the summer as to whether we're going to drill that project sometime in 2022. So lots of activity for a small company. Um, uh, you know, we've got multiple opportunities to deliver here from a discovery standpoint, and um, hopefully we'll continue to attract investors that want to invest in lithium and want to invest in a North American company that's focused on um, really interesting projects. So when it comes to having these projects in Nevada and in Canada, um, what are some of the hurdles that you still find that you and your team are trying to overcome? Well, I think the bottleneck down the road really is going to be permitting. I mean, I think at the end of the day, that's going to be the biggest challenge. And, and that really goes for most jurisdictions around the world. Um, uh, you can have uh, demand for supply. You can have um, great commodity prices. Lithium's up over 400% this past year. Um, you can have capital to, to grow these businesses. But at the end of the day, permitting is where the bottleneck is going to be. And so it's important that we get on the front end of that. Um, uh, ESG issues um, are very important. Um, we have to use best practices as a company. Um, we've got to um, be concerned about First Nations issues, environmental issues, um, community issues. So again, I've got experience in that area and I know people that uh, that we can um, utilize as advisors that have experience in that area. And so we can get um, on the front end of that. And, and the key is, even though we're a long way from production um, and from a major permitting uh, process, um, we want to begin understanding the risks that are involved and make sure that we begin on that that ESG plan in a um, in a in a in a prudent way. So, to me, that's really the biggest risk down the road. And again, we want to get on the front end of that and manage that as we develop this project and hopefully de-risk it on behalf of um, uh, our shareholders. You know, there's there's good federal support now. Uh, they're talking to talk. Ultimately, will they green light projects like ours if we were to make a discovery and ultimately develop a PEA? get to pre-feasibility and then feasibility. All those things are future milestones we'd like to achieve. There's no guarantee we can achieve these, but um, hopefully down the road, we will reach a stage where we actually need to permit a project. I mean, that would be certainly uh, a vision of ours and a goal of ours down the road. And Steve, well-articulated answer, by the way. Um, and, and what has your current shareholder sentiment been like? Because obviously you've, you've you know, You've been your team's been meeting the milestones that you announced that you say you're going to do. You've you've been able to close a number of financings, and I'm sure investors reach out to you and or your existing shareholders reach out to you. So, what has that sentiment been like? Well, I think there is a um, a broad mining investor that's interested in commodities and has been taking a look at critical minerals or battery metals over this last couple of years. That's interested in um, in companies like ours. But I think what's really interesting is we're seeing a new generation of investor that's coming into the market that maybe has not had a history of investing in, yeah. in mining companies, but have invested in companies like Tesla or want to maybe buy a, an electric vehicle that have been using uh, lithium batteries in their phones and their laptops, their tablets and so forth. So there's a technology investor and a younger investor that is now looking at core commodities such as lithium and nickel, cobalt, rare earth metals for the very, very first time. So we're seeing a whole new generation of investors that are looking at companies like ours that, that uh, see opportunity here as they understand the absolute crisis that we're facing for these metals. So I think the traditional mineral investor um, uh, is changing and uh, that's actually a good thing. It's a good thing to see the young investors are starting to now look at commodities like lithium as an opportunity to place their money. Steve, so speaking of the, the newer investor, the younger generation, how do you cater your messaging to make sure that the right audience uh, gets the right message? 
most new investors now want to um, want to reduce carbon emissions. They want they want the green economy. Um, uh, they believe that um, getting off of fossil fuels to some degree is important. Um, we're not going to get off fossil fuels today, and and, and frankly, um, not for a very very long time, in my opinion. Um, and but we need to um, reduce our our carbon footprint, and part of that is to evolve this green economy. Technology is going to be very important part of it. And ensuring that we um, have uh, these critical minerals available in the supply chain. But the key part for me as a CEO is to reduce our impact and to um, utilize things like direct lithium extraction as a new technology uh, to produce lithium. And there's some really interesting technology companies out there that are advancing the technology. So, so rather than uh, traditional mining methods that have been used, um, really I see an industry evolving where new technology is being utilized to reduce the impact. We're not talking about no impact, we're talking about reduction of impact. And so that's my goal here is to use best practices to identify new technology, to uh, ultimately um, develop a resource. And, um, and that's ultimately the vision I have as CEO. Well said again, Steve. Now, I obviously want to encourage anybody watching this clip to go to your website to, you know, obviously read up on the two, two jurisdiction, two regions of projects that you have, one being Nevada, the other being Manitoba and Canada. But I also want them to, you know, obviously read up on your team. Uh, read up on some of your technology that you're using, some of the partners that you might have. Where can our viewers go to get more details, to reach out to your team should they have questions? Sure. Well, our website is acmelithium.com. Uh, there's a wealth of information there about our projects and our company. And certainly any investor can reach out to me and my team and talk to us directly. Um, as a young company, um, uh, talking to shareholders and potential investors is very important. I happen to be in London, uh, England um, right now at a conference. Um, I'm meeting with investors here that are highly interested in battery metals and lithium. And uh, again, part of this is to introduce our company for the first time. I'm, I'm actually doing the um, these types of uh, conferences uh, more often, again, to continue to talk about the developments in our company and introduce Acme to new investors um, globally. Steve, I really appreciated you taking the time while you're in London, like you mentioned, to not only educate myself a little bit, but also to talk to our viewers and our audience members about uh, your company, your projects, what the vision is and how you achieve, uh, intend on achieving that. Uh, to everybody watching, you've been listening to Mr. Steve Hansen. He is the founder, president, and CEO of Acme Lithium. Of course, it trades on the CSE. The symbol is ACME. Like I mentioned, I encourage you to go to their website, sign up for their press releases, and keep up with what this company has in store, not only for 2022, but for the future as well. Uh, Steve, again, thank you so much for taking the time today.